Hi, I'm Pete Ford, I'm the, uh, the warden here. This is uh, Brownfield Woods, a national nature reserve that the Suffolk Wildlife Trust own and manage. Um, the earliest records of this wood date back to 1252 when the monks of Bury St Edmunds Abbey used to uh, own and manage this woodland really right up until the Reformation. Um, but what is unique about this woodland is that there was a rake factory set up in the 1900s uh, that coppiced this wood, supplying hay rakes and scythe handles uh, and the like, um, and continued really right up until the 1950s. And um, there was threat of grubbing this woodland up in the 19, late 1960s, and so with a local appeal, uh, managed to save uh, just, under, just over half, I beg your pardon, of uh, the ancient woodland. It was made a nature reserve in 1970 and uh, it's been managed as coppice with standards really ever since. We coppice on a 25 year rotation um, and doing about six to eight acres of coppice each winter. Um, so it's big enough for firewood and also thatching hazel, bean poles, pea sticks and all that sort of thing. Um, to manage this wood well um, really relies on a number of volunteers to get uh, six to eight acres of coppice done each winter. I'm full time here, I have four other woodlands to, uh, I, to manage but uh, less so, but um, there is quite a bit of involvement here and the responsibility is to get, as I say, eight, eight acres of coppice done each winter. These days this wood is very important to uh, supply and biofuel locally, sort of really within a four mile radius we deliver with a tractor and trailer and possibly supply up to about 150 tonnes of firewood to probably 50-60 customers uh, within the area. Um, when I first started here 30 years ago it wasn't that so important but with these days um, other fuel costs are so high that um, fuel wood is wor certainly worth considering and is very efficient. I came into managing Bradfield Woods um, through volunteering at uh, Westow Anglo-Saxon Village. They were using poles for reconstruction in the village just north of Bury St Edmunds and uh, they told me about this wood that was supplying the poles to them. Uh, at that time I was in between uh, contract jobs as uh, wardening and uh, as I say I was doing some voluntary work and lo and behold they were looking for a, a part-time post. As I say this was 30 years ago for six months and I've been here ever since but I have done quite a bit of voluntary work before that time when I was working for the post office telephones when I left school and uh, went out every weekend and we went on various courses doing uh, anything from pond management to woodland management. I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's jolly hard work but it's great fun and I like being in all weathers in, uh, in all situations. It's good. The changes I've seen in woodland management over the last 30 years here has really been from short rotation uh, generally for supplying thatching hazel uh, more to the firewood market. We're now coppicing on a 20, 25 year rotation and particularly door mice, it's very important that it is done on a, a much longer rotation where the hazelnut production is sort of much higher. The best things managing Bradfield Woods is the um, well, working in all weathers um, and just seeing the wood through the seasons and also working with a, a lot of dedicated and motivated volunteers. I'm getting more and more coming forward that are really keen to do woodland management and uh, are being really beneficial in helping me um, manage the wood. I, I suppose the worst things about this job is waking up in the depths of winter with aching joints and driving to work in really snowy conditions. Once I'm at work it's great because uh, as I say we've got a good number of volunteers who are very enthusiastic and uh, I, I love working with them and uh, it, it's still a great joy to work here. Really the most important skills of my job uh, first of all is to be able to write and understand uh, man writing the management plan for the woods uh, with others and carrying it out and also really leading by example and um, making sure volunteers fully understand and, and communicating with them as to what we're doing and as I said leading by example is, is really quite important. Also we have a quite a lot of different machinery that we need to use um, and the skills in using this machinery is, is very important and the safety aspects particularly with chainsaws uh, they're highly dangerous bits of machine and you've got to be on the ball all the time. 
The skills of a volunteer really are aptitude to work. It's quite hard working in all weathers out here and dedication and communication. They're the three things that are just so important in working together as a team.